Hey guys, Dan here, and uh, Merlin. It's me. Welcome back to Dan Does Disney. We usually have uh, Tim, because he does the uh, the live action ones, the little and the documentary ones, ones. And uh, but you, my friend, have been big doing and the big animated features, and Lady and the Tramp certainly falls into that category. I'd say so. Uh, one of the, really one of the biggest, as we'll find out. Oh, wow. As we do some of the background on uh, oh. this movie. As always. I was so excited about this one, this conversation. I actually cheated and did a little bit of research. Is so that right? I know this was a pretty big Ooh, success. All I right. was like, wow. Tim always does a bunch of research. I like to be own. surprised by all the features. But you. But, but I was like. Usually, usually go in blind. Usually go in blind. But uh, I, looked, I looked up that the money part and I'm like, oh, wow. There's a lot of things at work here. And we'll talk about them. You and told me. As usual, we'll uh, sort of do the background on the movie itself. Talk about the movie. And then. We'll go over the DVD, Blu-ray itself, and the features. This is the Diamond Edition that I have, which is, I think, the most... Well, there might be a signature edition, but I think all the extras are the same. So, extras-wise, same. So, this was, uh, in 1955, the 15th animated feature. Uh, the 27th overall Disney feature. Okay. Um, is what this says. I think, I think that lines up with my Dan Does Disney. I'll have to look. Um, it's hard to tell because that Davy Crockett I just did with Tim is really just a mashup of TV episodes. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so this was the first animated feature ever uh, filmed in the CinemaScope widescreen. Ooh. And Tim and I have been talking about this because 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was the first ever movie at all that was filmed in CinemaScope. Cool. So this is the first animated. So Disney, again, we learned back in Fantasia. Innovation. Innovation. Technology, like, I, it's kind of one of those things going through this. Like, I knew that's one of the things I really like about it is that I realized how I always knew obviously Disney was great, but like from a technical perspective and a business perspective, yeah. they really did up the game for so much. They really didn't, and I, I don't think people quite realize that. No. They say, "Oh, Bambi's cute," you know. But like, like but the, what what ended up no, Bambi? Like, like whoa. yeah, like let's tell you. So, um, so yeah, this was uh, a big hit. Yes. This this in its initial release took in a higher figure than any other Disney picture since Snow White, mm -hmm. which, of course, was the first animated feature ever, so that was going to be big. So it earned $6.5 million. Then they released it in 62, another $6.5 million. Then they released it in 72, $10 million. Man. 1980, $27 million. And the final release, 86, $31 million. Oof. So the lifetime domestic is a little over $90 million. International... 187 million. I saw that. Yeah. So the to total gross for the whole movie is nearing 300 million dollars. And compared to the budget for a 1955 movie that only costs a few million to make, that's 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 a staggering. Successful film. Staggering. My goodness. Um, now, why do you think this was so successful? I'll tell you exactly why I think it is. So you don't you don't have a specific reason. You just have theories. I have a theory that is. Bulletproof, I think. Uh, I I would love to hear it because I'll be honest. Tell me. I mean, I don't want to spoil this, but okay, all right. But, well, but, but basically, all right. Before going into doing Lady and the Tramp, right? I don't know if you know this. It's never been one of my go-to favorites. It's never been one of my go-to favorites either. But it's definitely a classic that a lot of people love. Yes. I only have one general theory, and we could get into more when we talk about the specifics of the film that might contribute. Okay. But I think... It's, it has nothing to do with the film itself, I'll tell you that. Seriously? Yep. Well, then I, my theory's out the door. The answer is because, and we've been talking about this a lot on Dan Does Disney with Tim, is that the Disneyland television show uh, premiered in 1954. This was the first animated feature since that show. That show was essentially a an hour commercial every single week for Walt to talk about his movies. In it, he would run some of his old classics. You know, he ran Alice in Wonderland that first year. He ran those Davy Crockett specials that turned into the movie. So he had plenty of time to promote for free, basically, this movie. Uh... And there's, in fact, one of the bonus features, when we talk about the bonus features... Um, there was a, a uh, an episode of Disneyland that was dedicated to dogs. Half of it was the history of Pluto, the dog, and they would show some of the classic Pluto shorts. 
The other half was literally, well, let me tell you about my upcoming feature, Lady and the Tramp, and introduce you to the dogs. Man. And da 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 They went hard with that. So they don't talk about that specifically in this other than to sh they actually do show that feature on here. But in my mind, there's no doubt that's why this was well, such a huge success. You mentioned something like that, I think, in one of the last videos we did together about this, was that Walt was starting to use TV to his advantage to promote his movies. Yep. So this was the first one with that really solid campaign. Yeah, I think the one we did before was it? with it was Alice in Wonderland, or yeah, maybe Peter, Peter Pan. One of those two. Uh, or maybe it was even Cinderella. Because it was a show from like Cinderella. 19, it was like yeah. 50 or 51 and whatever variety show was hot, it wasn't like Milton Berle, but it was, it was like Cinderella. something, yeah. um, they had the actress that portrayed Cinderella yep. come out, and they did like a 20-minute segment with her. And yeah, we talked about this then, that Walt really, very early on, understood the reach, the reach that television had. And a lot of people don't know this, but um, even today, so the Disney Channel, the TV network, mm -hmm. now that used to be a pay channel when I was a kid, but in the 90s it became basically free for everybody. Yeah. Do you know that that does not run commercials? Every commercial on Disney Channel is for Disney. It's for an upcoming movie. It's for a toy from the Disney wow. company. It's for coming up on, you know, the ABC or, you know, on whatever. It's they, because ABC owns Disney Channel, so they own Freeform, they own ABC... Every single commercial on Disney Channel is for a Disney product. It's basically a TV station for Disney by Disney. Correct. All things Disney. That's pretty cool. Isn't that actually. wild? Wow. And I, I discovered that um, when I used to work at the Y, they would have Disney Channel on in the lobby. And I, we, I, I don't even know what show it was, but I was just like, every commercial was like for one of their upcoming movies or for something. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start paying attention now to all these commercial breaks. All Everything is for stuff. Disney. That is... I and never, people don't realize that. I never thought about yeah. that watching it because it wasn't like my go-to no. as a kid. I always liked the WB. Well, kids that, wouldn't think about it anyway. But, but that's like, why they do it. But now it's like, oh, all the stuff would be really... I'll have to, go, I would, I'll have to tune into that sometime. Yeah. Like, and, and, and the thing it. is, Disney has its hand in so many different things that you don't automatically think of it. They got gargoyles. They got all the things. You know, now Marvel now. And now they have Disney+. Star Plus. Wars. Now they own Hulu. Simpsons. They, so, so you can still have those running. But it's all Disney. But it's right? all Disney. The, the wonderful, magnificent evil of yeah. Disney's... <laughs> well, and that's the thing. We could go back and forth well, all day about how evil or not evil but, they but are. Like, but, but, the, the business, but they're shrewd. It, 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 the business uh, savvy yep. of Walt... Just, and Walt started that. It's still there. It's right. a branch off from this lady in the track Absolutely. Promotion. Stuff like that. So, you know, that's basically, uh, in okay. my opinion, hands down why this was such a success. All right, you know what? Because critically, upon first release, it was not well received. That is true, and yeah. I, I looked that up too, yeah. which I thought was interesting. Well, how about this? In retrospect, maybe, everyone loves it. And that's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> that explains the initial success, but the enduring success. That's well, the real question. The enduring success is it was a good movie. I mean, oh. we'll, we'll talk about our own opinions, oh. but people love this movie. It's a Disney movie. It's, it's, a, fine. it's a Disney movie. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, and and personally, we'll get into grades later. Personally, I certainly enjoyed it more than a couple of the ones we've done lately. Um, you Same. know, is it on a, is it on par for me with some of the early ones? No, and we'll talk about why. We'll, we'll get there. But we're jumping around um, a lot. We're jumping time. around a lot already. But I knew it was going to be an interesting conversation. But point being, um, I don't know why it endures. Probably because my, kids loved it. And my you theory know? was, and we'll get into this more, I think that this, the, one of those things, I'm sure Walt had the passion behind it, this is clearly a dog lover's movie. Dog lover's movie, and, which I'm not really and, one. And I'm not either, but, but <laughs> I was cat like, people. we're cat people, which, which we'll factor in we'll here. We'll talk about that. Oh, man. Uh, but, um, but I really will say, just before going into it, we'll talk about it more. I really yeah. do want to talk God, about it. God, there's so much background, too, there, that we haven't even talked that, about. Which you'll tell me. Yeah. I just want to say, I do think that if you're a dog person, this really will speak to you. I agree. And I could sense that. Um, well, and I think the other thing that speaks to the re-releases being successful is because it made so much money the first time. It's mm -hmm. one of those things where they can go back to and say, oh, you know, from Disney's biggest success in Snow White. They could say that. Lady and the Tramp's coming back to Ooh, theaters, everybody. Why was it so good? Let's yeah. go watch it. Yep. That's smart, too. Yep. It's not lying with the promotion. So, God, what a what a machine Disney was. <sighs> Still is. Still is. Um, all right. So, anyway, this started in 1937 
Another small brainchild. Another brainchild with uh, an idea from Jill Grant. He owned a dog named Lady. All right. Uh-huh. And, um, was she a Cocker Spaniel? Uh, no, she was a Spaniel, but it wasn't a Cocker Spaniel. Okay. I forget what kind of Spaniel Dang it was, it. but it wasn't the okay, exact one. Okay, it was a Spaniel, one. though. Okay. Um, but anyway, Lady uh, was pushed aside because they got a new baby, and so the, th- the thought began. Wow, it's almost like okay. it has a personal uh, influence. So yeah. he started making up sketches. Then... There was, in 1945, a Cosmopolitan short story slash article about Happy Dan the Cynical Dog. Ah, oh, okay? the tramp. And by, by the tramp. By Ward Green. And so Disney hmm. kind of liked this idea. Commissioned Green uh, to, once he decided to buy the rights to the story, listen to this. Here's, here's the Disney shrewd money-making machine again. Once he commissioned the rights to the, or brought the rights to the story... He commissioned this author, Ward Green, to write a novelization of the film two years before it came out because this is like Wait. the first Disney thing that wasn't already a story. You know something? That, so, that could be pretty innovative, too, because novelizations before movies come out is such a big thing. Real big now. That, that was very... Re- that could not have been very... Is that another smart I, Disney gene? I had not heard of that before. I don't know if... That's the case or not? I don't know if he invented the novelization of the movie, but but that's still that's pretty early. But when you think about all of his previous movies that that are on the animated side, you know, Snow White, Pinocchio, books, Cinderella, they're all Peter Pan. They're all from previous Literature. books, previous stories, even most of his live action movies. Yes, Twenty Thousand Leagues, So Dear to My Heart. You know, these were all he likes books to have source Rob material Roy. people can gravitate to because of recognizability, right. marketability. But this was brand new. So let's. Uh, so he said, "Okay, Mr. Green, get the buzz I'm going to commission you to do this." Isn't that crazy? He paid a guy to basically expand on it. So that his movie could be bigger. Correct. That is so... Correct. Clever. All right. So originally, Man. they had many different names for the Tramp. Disney. Rags. Fair. Homer. Classic. Bozo. <laughs> that was before Bozo the Clown, by the way. Um, and then they settled on Tramp. Okay. So the, the finished film is uh, a bit different. Okay. From the original, obviously, you know, from the, thir- the late 30s on. Um, so there was going to be a Next Door Neighbor. This uh, canine named Hubert, um, and Hubert was later replaced with two people, Jock and, and uh, Trusty. Mm-hmm. Aunt Sarah was Aunt Sarah. Uh, traditionally the overbearing mother-in-law. Um, in the final film, she's more of a busybody, not quite as uh, overreaching. Um, mm. And we had, uh, oh, Aunt Sarah had uh, Nip and Tuck. That were not Siamese cats. What were they? Really? They were later renamed. They were cats, but they just weren't Siamese. So they were later renamed to what we'll get to. We'll talk about that part. What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> um, okay. And originally, ladies' owners actually had names too. And they weren't Jim Deere and Darling. Uh, well, Jim, Jim and Elizabeth, but basically um, Jim Deere and Darling now. But they were even referred to at one point as Mister and Mrs. Because they really wanted to hit home. This is from Lady's perspective. This is from Lady's I, perspective. I like Jim Deere and Darling. Uh, but I like Jim Deere and Darling too because that is what they called each other. Yes. You know, a so little it, more believable. So it's still from Lady's perspective. That's still good. Which, by the way, I really liked that. Yes. Um, now, did you notice or have you noticed in watching it in the past that their faces are barely ever shown? Barely. But you they know, kind of gradually get more shown throughout the movie. A little bit, which I, like I didn't really notice the first time I Yeah, I think, think that like last scene but, you see, like I think you see both of them completely for a few seconds. Yes, I think that's true. But mostly um, be from lower, from dog's perspective. Yes. Uh, and so there have been uh, a lot of you know rewrites, obviously. Uh, a lot of cut scenes, songs that were cut. We see a lot of these on the DVD, which we'll get to. But originally there was a, a love triangle. With Lady the Tramp well, and a Russian wolfhound named Boris. Well, they're Russian. Okay. Business. He appears in the final film in the Dog Pound. He's a philosopher. But there's no, uh, there's no love triangle there. going on. Um, and uh, guess which scene was inspired from Walt Disney's own life? The final scene. Spoilers if you've never seen Lady and the Tramp. Why are you watching this uh, video? Um, which... The uh, they unwrap the hat box. Oh, I'm sorry, not the closing sequence. But the opening. Oh, the opening sequence. I was like, why? Unwraps, unwraps the oh, hat with, box with the dog in the present. Ladies in there. Oh. Um, that that came directly well, from it does Disney's have a own line. Classic. 
Um, oh, it's wonderful. What else? It wasn't the same, again, not the same uh, breed, but still. Well, it's fine. Um, so anyway, in 1949, this Joe Grant that had, had been doing these sketches, he had commissioned all the animators to try some sketches. He left in 1949 um, because he, I forget where he went, but, um, but basically... Disney, by that point, had seen the short story, was getting ideas for the movie. He's got enough. So they, they were using all of those original concepts to sort of retool things. Um, and unfortunately, because of that, Grant actually does not appear in the credits at all, even uh -huh. though this was largely his concept. Da, huh. da, 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 da. Okay. So they talk about that a lot in the DVD, the okay. animators on the, on the um, credits and stuff. Okay. Um, now, Peggy Lee, who voices uh, a bunch of characters, are you familiar at all with this person, Peggy Lee, She's a famous singer from the '60s. Did she voice somebody here? She she voiced four characters in this movie. Um, Did she okay, including uh, what's her face, uh, Lee. Oh, okay. I believe I I only when I when I heard it again, I I was hearing those notes, and you know how like he likes to reuse some of the same performers. Yeah, I believe she's one of the fairies from one of my favorites, The Sleeping Beauty. I'm not sure if she did that one, but she's done other projects with him, so I wouldn't be surprised. I think I think she's the blue I, fairy. I would not be surprised. If I remember correct. Um, okay, so could she, be wrong. She, her most famous contribution, I think, other than maybe the Lady of the Tramp, would be she sings that song "Fever" from the '60s. Fever in the morning, fever all through the night. You know okay, that song. Okay. okay. So anyway, she ended up suing. The Disney Corporation when the VHS came out, okay, because they were trying to screw her over on the rights because she wrote most of the songs in the movie, oh, or co-wrote, sang a bunch of the songs in the movie, and voiced four different characters. And basically, um, when they put the VHS out, they didn't give her any of the money from it, none of the rights, da 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 So she sued for breach of contract, and she actually won $3.2 million well, I'd imagine. in 1992. Yeah, she, um, so she had a big part of this movie as well. Big part of the movie. Um, oh, do you just say which song she wrote, or just... Uh... Uh, hmm, I don't have it right here, but I, I can tell you while you tell me about uh, the plot in a little bit. Okay. But to our good friend Mary Blair... The big Disney female animator that we've talked about in a few of these. Mm -hmm. um, she left before this movie uh, took place as well, but she was uh, doing some sketches for the film that kind of made their way into the final product. Um, do you know why she left Disney, by the way? This was very interesting. Why? She became a children's book illustrator. Well, that's fitting. Isn't that great? Um, so we love Mary Blair. She worked. Yeah. I think the first time we talked about her was maybe on Alice in Wonderland or Cinderella. Um, but anyway, so um, they, he did the classic Disney thing with the different models, and he would have real dogs in the studio running around so he could get yep. their movements and yep. all of that. Which is great, yeah. Um, and he, they, uh, they had almost 50 different um, miniature um, concepts for the Bella Note classic spaghetti scene. Really? So that could have went many different ways, but uh, cool. I think they went with the classic, of course. Um, what else about the background? I guess maybe that's it. Oh, the CinemaScope stuff. Okay, so this was a pain in the animators' butts. Okay. Because a lot of theaters were not equipped with CinemaScope. Of course not. So they had to virtually um, make two completely separate Movies. cuts of the film. Wow. So there's a full frame aspect ratio, um, and then the CinemaScope version which is what we see on the DVD on the Blu-ray. I assume probably that's what's on Disney Plus as well. Because it's the first animated Senate scope, they really were like having trouble trying to figure out, okay, what is even CinemaScope? Mm -hmm. Because they were working on this for so long that originally it wasn't in CinemaScope. So they had to basically do different framing techniques and different close-up shots, um, which of course they would use later for everything on TV because in the 80s and 90s when they had VHS, you know, the they had the pan and scan mm -hmm. or the widescreen. You could buy, you know, one or the other. Um, but basically, uh, there's not that many close-ups in this movie because of that. Okay. Because of the, the wide. And we, it, uh, Tim and I talked about this for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea as well, um, that there's not a ton of close-ups in uh, some of those scenes. 
Um, so what else? Yes, jump cuts. Okay, that's really it. So yeah, basically animators had to kind of reinvent their technique to make it dual purpose, depending on what sort of theater was showing the movie. Um, that's about it, I guess. Um, oh, pretty man. crazy, right? Uh, I'll, once again, a lot of history behind this one. A lot of history cool. behind this one. As you would expect, I guess, with the first CinemaScope animation. No, it's cool. Um, 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 you know, a movie that took 17, 18 uh, years to uh, get off the uh, ground. Once again, a lot of time, thought, effort put into this project, and it shows. And I, and I like yeah. how a lot of the pieces come together really well. There's no doubt about which that. Which is pretty much you could say about most Disney movies, it seems like, or at least the animated classics we've been talking about. I, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, so here's what she sings in the, in the movie, okay. Peggy Lee. Uh, I don't know what she specifically wrote, but she sings the Siamese Cats. Oh. He's a Tramp. Oh, I thought she was a Tramp, yeah. La La Lou. La La Lou. Classic. La La Lou. Um, and let's see who all she voiced in, uh, in the cast here. Oh, she actually didn't voice Lady. I was about to say, okay, I didn't I think. I thought maybe she did. I didn't think she was a singer. Um, but, oh, yeah, she, oh, she voices, uh, Darling. 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 For one thing, okay. um, she voices both of the Siamese cats. That makes sense, and she sings the song. Um, and what else? Uh, Peg. Oh, oh the, the female uh, Pekingese. Yeah. Okay, so she voices Peg as well. So, um, Lady was voiced by Barbara Luddy, who let's let's oh, see her. Fairy? Yeah, she let's see her uh, her Disney filmography here. Oh, well, she did uh, Kanga from Winnie the Pooh. That makes sense. Okay. Um, Meriwether in Sleeping Beauty. Oh, okay. Your favorite. Yeah, you yeah. love Sleeping Beauty. I, I do. Uh, this was actually her first, though, for the studio. I, I didn't know this was before. Uh, she yeah. did She did Rover in 101 Dalmatians. She did Meriwether in Sleeping Beauty, Kanga in Winnie the Pooh. Oh, she's a classic. Um, though. And uh, Mother Rabbit and Mother Sexton in Robin Hood oh, as well. Oh, really? So she did uh, a few things. Oh, nice. Yeah, she died in the 70s, so that was that was the end. But okay. she did a lot of Disney I, I was like, but this was the first. I knew that voice. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, know, I know she's in Sleeping Beauty, yeah. This was the first. So, all right, so let's talk about Lady of the Tramp. Now, if you're watching this video, we assume you've probably seen it. But yeah, well, go, just for kicks, we like to go over kind of the plot spoilers. Anyway, I mean, like, before we talk about well, uh, the well, specifics. Once again, I mean, I think that's one of the benefits. You give me the easy job is that, especially a lot of these, the plot's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, you know. And this is another quickie, too. It's like 75 minutes or something. Another brief watch. Another quickie. So, but uh, it's, it's uh, pretty well... Uh, pace though uh basically we're introduced to jimmy and darling and as we establish i think it's for christmas right it's a christmas it movie. is a christmas yep it begins and ends actually christmas, which yeah thought was a cool little uh i guess you could call lady yeah, the tramp a christmas movie. kind of is christmas theme yeah uh, there for that so for the framing and uh, did it come out i don't think let me see what what well, month it came out did it come out for the christmas season no summer well, most June. Of, most of the movie doesn't. Take well, place Christmas. all right. I think it's, Christmas. but I think it goes in the pantheon of if, if, non Christmas Christmas movies. If you want to watch a right? Christmas, I wouldn't argue with it. Yeah, absolutely. But basically, this this couple, Jim Deere, gives Lady this little puppy to his wife as a present, and Lady is a puppy. Gets great, cute, great, adorable, nice very little cute. puppy, yeah. very cute. Um, I'd say uh, for me, cutest dog in the movie. Oh, Yes. All she, right. She, lady is adorable. Just to I, say it. Lady, lady is great. Very yeah, cute. I, I, she's well animated. Yeah. Absolutely. She's sweet. Very uh, sweet. She's a lovable puppy. Uh, and I, I love the little scene where she's, it seems very believable. And, uh, when we got a little kitten, it's very similar. We had to kind of keep her separate at night. And yes. she fawned in one and would find ways to get up. And she finds ways around. And eventually the man's like, just for tonight, and there's that transition of I'm gonna break down the whole movie. Sure. Simple, and and into her being an I adult, said it was simple. And, and I'm like it's six months old or whatever. But yeah. I'm sure a lot of pet owners can relate to that. See, even as a cat person, I get a lot of it. I agree. Actually, so it wasn't that bad. But there's that, and of course everything's fine. And then we get we get the whole you know classic first child, second child in the sense that oh they're they're acting a little differently. She talks to Jock and and Trusty her friends. Love them. My favorites. I was gonna say they're probably they're, my favorite. They're, they're, well. they're my favorite characters. They're pretty great. They're really good. But uh, basically, okay, what's going on? They're they're not paying as much attention to me. The baby's on the way. What's a baby? Yep. Meanwhile, this out of town, we're introduced to Tramp. He's a stray living on the Tramp's okay. No, well, wait, no, all right. Wait, wait. <laughs> hey, as as Sylvie would say, hey, what's the going on? Hey, you're right. Believe me, Dan. We'll, We'll, we'll talk, talk about, about it. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I'm... Okay. All right. Uh, 
the man is kind of basically the guy. I do have. I All have, right. Hmm, I'm trust. I think this could be good. They go to the restaurant. But wait. wait. Have wait. The spaghetti. No wait. Tramp. <laughs> Tramp is basically he's kind of like a rebel, adventurous criminal dog. Essentially mm -hmm. steals things, bounces around, begging for food on the run from the uh, pope. The not the poachers. The um the dog pound. Right. Uh, what uh, dog animal, animal control animal people? Control, yep. The 1909 equivalent. The classic dog catcher. The, the classic dog catcher. And he kind of like runs in and says, oh, you know, kind of tweaking things and suggesting, oh, man, if the baby moves in, you're going to kicked out. Like, why, why would you stay with them? They don't really care. Right. Be a free dog like me. There's temptation. But basically, this all leads to her eventually getting basically in trouble when she's running around. Right. And the aunt, aunt Sarah comes in when they, they go out of town which is where everything goes awry. We'll talk about the cats later. Okay. Oh, uh, Cy and Am. But ba Cy and Am. <laughs> basically, she does go into the doghouse, which is ironically because of his influence. And him yeah. cut, And basically, the only reason she gets into trouble... In the, but she's listening uh, to... She, she's naive. People. She's naive. naive. Like she should have listened to Jacques and trust... Anyway. Okay. But he gets her in trouble. But basically, there's this rat that does get into the house and Tramp decides to help out and... Fights the, the the rat, but this leads into him. Some of the most interesting animation in the film. De we'll I get would say. definitely, but there's a misunderstanding. They Santa Sarah comes in. Oh, he's just attacking the baby. Misunderstanding, sent to the pound to be executed essentially because right. they go into some dark places in this movie. But uh, Jock and they're not as many as some. N no, but but in some ways more. We'll, we'll talk okay. about that, which I kind of appreciated. Jock and Trusty go to the rescue to try and save him. Yep. This culminates in a fake out, possible death, and then everybody comes together when Tramp is invited with the house and uh, they're, he's part of the family and Whispered Lady and yeah. Baby and everything. And then they have uh, a little Christmas again. Another Christmas. And that's the whole movie. Um, well, you didn't talk too much about the spaghetti. Yes. <laughs> when, he's, okay. when he's taking her around town showing how great it is to be a free dog and not yep. a house dog, they have the spaghetti scene which is okay. the most famous scene in the movie which I don't care that much about. Now... When you say most famous scene in the movie, I would say... It's on the cover, I would say, people! No, no, but I mean, I would say, not just in this movie. Of all I mean, I would, say, I would say, in terms of Disney animated scenes, this has got to be... Now, let's forget... All right, hold on. Let's forget the new era. Let's forget, like, the holding Mufasa. up of the... Oh, yeah, holding up of the thing in okay, Lion okay. King. All right, all right. Let's forget the ballroom dancing scene in Beauty and the Beast. I'm talking about old school. While Walt was still alive, like the classic, let's say first, you know, twenty animated movies or whatever, uh, there are not too many scenes more classic than the effing all right spaghetti. Uh, all right, all right, right. Yeah. I'll give you this of the classic Walt still alive Disney. This is probably the most iconic scene. Other the I'm only to think of the one. only one I could even think of that comes close is probably Mickey Sorcerer's Apprentice. Okay, that that you know oh, sorry, that's right. pretty classic. That might beat it. And then we're going to talk about shorts, obviously, Steamboat Willie. But I mean, for but, but full length features, which Fantasia really is not. No, it is, but kind of not. I would say I like Fantasia. This <laughs> and let's think. Maybe the kids flying out the window in Peter Pan. That's pretty iconic. Very classic. Not as much as this. And maybe something else in Wonderland, the Mad Hatter scene. I don't uh, know. But Maleficent's scene when she's um, in, in the entrance of the ball is pretty iconic. But that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Maybe the prince putting on the slipper. Oh, for... That's pretty big. Yeah, for Cinderella. But that, I mean... Uh, but that's more general Cinderella. But come on. All right. It's, I mean, yes. is there anything more iconic? It's very cute. It's very right? nice. All right. It's, I'm just saying. It's, it is an iconic scene, and yeah. I glazed over it because it's so important to the movie. I, I use sarcasm. They're so important to the movie. Now, look. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I look, you I, know, it's funny. It's funny you say that. I'm interested in all these things. I completely forgot in my synopsis. You're right. I you forgot over. about it. Because I... I, no, it's such an important part of the movie. It, it, it is, is the most iconic. It's, it's where they have chemistry and it's chemistry, sweet. Chemistry, shows the cute. nice side. They got the great stereotypes there. Italian, too. I was going to say the Italian accordion player, They're the whole pretty, thing. They're pretty good. Um, um, Tony and uh, yeah, something. Tony and the Sopranos. <laughs> um, um, more or less, though, I, I mean, I, I, I felt like these stereotypes were not as bad as Tromboli 15 years earlier. No, these, these, right? these Italian stereotypes, I'll, we'll bring it up. As they were actually decent characters. Yeah. Maybe they were little characters, but they were people, and they were well-meaning and nice and talented. Yes. And they were nice and They were fine. 
I would say... They seem like Italian guys at a pizza place. Yeah, absolutely. To be honest. Absolutely. I would say, you know, the racism of this, which we'll get to again, the, the cats. What? Um, but, the, <laughs> but the Italian they, shop they owners, were, the restaurant owners, I, I thought they were actually fine. I liked them. They were, yeah, they I were, thought they, they were fine. They were actually nice. Yep. And I liked that they were alluded to earlier. Hey, uh, it's a uh, get the bone for me. Yeah, yeah. I, it's true. They were nice. And they didn't actually show the main restaurant guy, just uh, his buddy. It's part true. Of her. So that was... That's we're going to come back to Tony's. It's the place of Tony's. Dang it. That's their favorite hang. That's their favorite place. Oh, i got to go there for this day. What else we want? Look, the spaghetti scene is very cute. It's very nice. It's well, fine. Animated. It's, there were pieces that impressed me more tactically. But for me... Your favorite scene was the meatball. Look, it's cute. It's not your favorite part. It's yet. a it's cute okay. scene. You're allowed to say it. But it's not my favorite part. Good. <laughs> um, and, and look, <laughs> I've already stated my spoiler at the beginning, that this is among the more middling of the f the first 15 that we've gone over. It's not as bad as Peter Pan or some of these other ones that we've reviewed r recently that I was very no. underwhelmed by. No. But it's, it's so far down from the A pluses of like, you know, Pinocchio and Snow White and, and Bambi we, and we were, Dumbo. We were getting like wowed every... Every time. For me, uh, I think the animation here is fine. There's some good There's stuff. There's a few scenes, like I said, the rat fight. The fight with the rat's pretty was cool. Was very good. Um, uh, and, and I do appreciate the perspective of the, dog. the dogs. However... I got some issues with it. Well, I, I, I want to hear your issues. I have interest. My main issue, I think, with it is that uh, it's, it's not original. Uh, Tom and Jerry was doing that 20 years earlier I in their cartoons. Yeah. You know, I mean, you never saw anybody the above the waist yeah. in a Tom and Jerry because it's all from the perspective of Tom and Jerry. That's true. Um, okay. So, in that regard, I, I have some mixed feelings about well, the animation. Well, well, wait, though. In term, maybe not just the animation, but you could say from a story-wise, they went a little harder with the animal perspective than Tom and Jerry because they're more cartoony. Mm -hmm. This one was trying to be more like realistic. Well, absolutely. I, and I would, I would agree. So that, that's different. <laughs> I would agree that this is certainly more realistic. It's trying, it's trying more in some real, ways real, and that's, than Tom and Jerry, that's, yes. That's what's a little different. But I wouldn't say... It's that mind-blowing. Well, I wouldn't say that's a fair comparison. No. But I just mean from an animation perspective. Oh, just animation. Uh, I meant from a writing perspective. No, no. From a writing perspective, certainly it's it's a lot different than, you know. But look, Tom and Jerry are also doing seven-minute gag movies. This is a whole, you know, 75-minute film. They eventually did it in the 90s. Well, and, and, it, was, <laughs> and it was bad. Where they talked. We, yeah. don't have to, we don't have to talk about that. They did the talking. Uh, remember when they, they were told, when they, they told us all friends? about it? God, it yeah, they became friends. Did you ever see? Did you ever actually see that? I've seen. Uh, I've seen enough of it because my it was out when my uh, my foster brothers were young and what we a, had the VHS what a of it. And it was strange like movie. The dumbest. <laughs> a strange. Right. As, as a Tom and Jerry fan, it was offensive. It weird to me. But uh, we we could go off about no. that at another time. But no, I, I'm not talking writing or reality. I'm talking about simply animation perspective. Okay. This this movie wasn't right. doing. Any of the things that we know right. the Disney movies are usually, like, wowing us with. I, I do want to say, I, I know we're saying this, I agree, it's not, like, anything it, more advanced than what we've seen thus no. far. But the animation is still very good. and I It's and, fine. And he pointed out how they have the models. They did do a really good job of modeling how a dog would move. Yes. And I really liked that. I definitely appreciate that. And that was, that's probably, that and the rat scene that, are probably the... Shadows, the uh, um, are probably the, the pinnacles of the animation in this film. They were very, they were, yeah. The animal movements were. But very I have cool. to say, the spaghetti scene is cute. Yes. Okay. You're hating on it. I like it. I'm just. All right. I feel like you're building to something here. No, no, I'm not building it. I just. You, you don't know, think it's that that you completely great glossed over it in the in the synopsis, and it is a very important scene because it, it it's when they. Really, really fall in love with each other, Dan. What? I'm I'm more of a sap than you. I'm more sentimental. And, and I don't I don't really like the sappiness. I get it, but I'm a but, sap but but, but the <laughs> what can I say? I. It's my, cute. My, my problem. It's cute. Do I think it's among my, the greatest scenes? Of, no, I've already said that. The, the reason why I glossed over that scene probably leads into my biggest issue with the film. Okay. Which I don't know if you want to talk Sticks. about. Sticks. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. I have. I What's have your a, biggest issue with the film? Do you, it's I, too much about the love story. No. Okay. I here. All right. 
All right, do you want to get the caps out of the way first? Because I'm assuming you'd think that would be my least favorite part. No. Oh, so, I, you, so you know what I'm they getting They sing a good song. All right, all right. Dan, you're being facetious. You know that I'm mad about something. I know, you hate you, 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 you hate alluded to these cats. Look, here, no. What no. are you mad about? All right. I've alluded the, to many the, things. The, the romance is fine. Okay. But it's it's not particularly well done. It's, it's okay. the weakest part of the movie. And, and there's yeah, I, mean, I think the, the adventure is the best part of this movie. Yes, the adventure is, is good. I yeah. think the, the weird thing about this movie, which is why I have very mixed feelings about okay. it, is because it's very much at odds with itself in terms of story. Okay. In some ways, this is the most advanced plot Disney has done yet. Well, certainly, uh, with it, you know, we've we've talked a lot recently about like how Alice is a very very uh, one dimensional character. Like Cinderella is a very one dimensional character. And I want to tell you that this Peter was, Pan had some interesting ones. A little bit, but and there were some good themes. We're, we're kind of like, ah, oh, they're getting there. This surprised me because, as you know, I'm like, ah, oh, Lady and the Tramps, whatever. Right. But these dogs. How about Jock? Jock. <laughs> They're all great. Best. In terms of writing, mm -hmm. these dogs are the most human, fleshed out, three dimensional characters I've seen, which really surprised me. And the voice acting sells it better than anything else. Yeah, the, voice, of, the voice acting is great. Instead of people sounding like they're talking on stage and these aren't like how people talk, they seem like conversations. Mm -hmm. they, they, talk, they have little references about like philosophy and politics and just their exchanges. It feels more like people. It, okay, I'll the tell you. Vo the voice acting is on point in this movie. I agree. This is the best. All right, I'll tell you I'm what. Tell, it, I'm telling you. Okay. It, it's great. I'll tell you what it reminded me of watching it this most recent time. Okay. Because the first time I watched it, um, well, the first time I watched it was like in middle school. But, <laughs> gotcha. Um, the the most recent time I watched it before this was about five years ago when we were doing on uh, film fanatics like the top five Disney classics or whatever. I forget what the topic was, but you were like, yeah, it was good. I was like, it was all right. Um, <laughs> but what it reminded me of this this latest time because these movies are more recent is those terrible Secret Life of Pets movies. <laughs> but where whereas I think those oh. movies are straight. Garbage. Certainly, the second one. The first one was okay. First one was kind of cute. Second yeah. one was terrible. But I think they're clearly trying to emulate how these, specifically the dogs in this movie, world. above any other animated dog movie, relate to them. Uh, relate to each other, relate to the real world, relate to other humans. I, it it was so clear to me after watching it. This Everyone's trying time, to relate in the trailer. I was like, oh my god, this is Secret Life of Pets, but fifty years ago, and much better, and good. <laughs> um, so, but, uh, but yes, I agree. Like the, the the dog personas in this movie the, are far and away above like most. I w I'm not going to say all because I think Pinocchio was a very right. fleshed out character. Pinocchio was. You know, some of them have, but, but all right, Dan. The bulk of the Disney animated characters thus far, maybe not. Like. Like, in terms of numbers of people in this movie, even Jim Deer Darling, and pretty much all the side characters, m most of them, they have such personality I agree. and dynamic. They seem like people. They're yeah. characters. And, well, and might that also be because Walt and this guy that wrote the original uh, short story mm -hmm. and the guy that wrote the original sketches, mm -hmm. this is all a completely... Built from the ground up, like story, story, and the novelization where he did into it, right? Where he didn't have some fairy tales to look back on and say, "Okay, well, this grim fairy tale that's like, only ten pages, like, I'm going to make it into a whole movie." Like, like this movie had three, three directors, I think. Right? I can just picture. I the, believe that's the, true. Directors in the sound booth being like, "Okay, here's your character. This is what they're like. Try it this voice. Right. Try this line that way." Right? You know, they had characters written to act on and actors yeah you're right it was and directed by uh, like, three people and I, I just thought that was interesting but uh, but like the writing for the characters and the performances of the actors was really was, was something it was really was good was overall the best I've seen in Disney well, and look and I I'm, think, I'm serious it's really good I'm gonna go out on a limb even though we we don't love this spaghetti scene I like it more than you a little, um, a little bit it's fine but fine. I think because we're already as the viewer so invested in these characters by that point yes. That we are very happy when they yes. do the thing and they do the nose and it's very cute. Okay, it is cute. The problem is this. But you okay. hate the relationship part, I know. The relationship part is the weakest thing, but this isn't the thing. I could buy that it's a little love story and okay. it's magical. Sure, it's for kids. Fine. I'm like, whatever. And I was willing to give this movie the benefit of a doubt. Ooh, up okay. until... Up well, until... Have lost you. I'm like, okay, when he gets her in trouble and he feels kind of bad about it, I'm with her. I don't have any sympathy for him. I'm like, they, Jock okay. and Trusty, yeah, he's bad. I'm like, yeah, that's far. He's a bad influence. I love like, Jock and Trusty. Yeah, love them. 
They're great. We'll talk more about that. But this point in the movie, I'm like, yeah, he was not a good influence. He hasn't done much good for her. His perspective is wrong. Like, trying to show the different perspective, be adventurous. Okay. Thus far in the movie, she's fine. And, you know, all the conflict is his fault. So, it really, there's, there's nothing other than her naivete. Okay. Okay, so he's not very likable at this point. But, all right, whatever. He's got his different philosophy. Okay. Fine. Okay. Then... Instead of having a scene where they actually talk about it and flesh it out just a little bit more, a scene or two okay. between there, all of a sudden, oh, the rat's going into the house. Got to get the baby. All of a sudden, he cares. I guess they get on the good side. Goes in. Could in, be. In that great scene, which is well animated, fighting a Very rat. Very good animated. First of all, not some tension maybe because it's a diseased rat. I guess it's evil. But Tramp versus the rat, the dog's going to win. Right. Also, jumps on to the crib and either cripples or kills this baby. We don't know. This, no. Well, no. Spoilers. <laughs> the baby's perfectly fine, which I'm like, okay, he gets a right, reward for this. He gets a reward for this, not only from the people. The lady gets right. forgiven. He gets forgiven. Scott, for, there okay. is, there's, this crucial, there's this crucial part of this development that just wasn't in there. Okay. And since the writing, That's fair. everything else has been so good, the performance is so good, that big, massive issue really annoys me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. clearly. And I, because I was liking it so much, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I don't like the character of Tramp. I don't think his development is deserved. I don't like it. it. It doesn't quite work because of that one or two I, scenes, okay. a conversation between him and Lady, about what, what their perspectives are, so he would buy into it. I have no reason to believe he would want to sit in the house other than, I guess he's in, 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 in He loves out. her. Or something. I guess he, <laughs> he's attracted to her I simplicity. My point is they could have just... A few, another minute or two, Dan. Okay, yeah, would have would have really helped you out. But uh, but the way it's written, okay. it's it's well. It's, and look, it, mm. and this may be, you know, some of the critics' issues when the movie was first released. People didn't care for this movie. I guess not. By and large, uh, you know. Whereas I'm more on the on the fence about it. Um, I, that clearly didn't bother me nearly as much as you. But I agree, Tramp is the worst character. <laughs> He's terrible. He's the worst character of the film. He's I, not I'm likable. I'm not going to deny that. And well, you're like, oh, he's in love. He's in he love. is in love. Are you, are you going to deny that? I he's guess, in love. I guess. Well, he's they in love share, with, they he's share the three other people. He's the guy that's cheating going around town. He's that guy. Look. Yes. And and, and the, she and the, naive, and the naive And the naive girl never falls for that. Do that. Come on now. All right. It might you're, be, now you're being a little silly. It's too harsh. Tramp is the worst character. <laughs> I'm not going to deny it. Jock and Trusty are the best. It should have been a buddy picture. All right. Actually, they're, they're, they're pretty <laughs> It should great. have been a buddy they're, picture they're and not a ass. romance. Maybe that's true. Yeah. Okay. I did. Okay. Little, Maybe that's true. Subtle old-fashioned thing. I did like that, that one scene where after she comes home and she's in the doghouse, they actually are going to say, all right, well... We'll settle down with her. We'll marry her. Whichever one she gets with. like, right. And I believed that these old dogs don't have any malicious intent. They're just right. trying to do the old-fashioned thing of, like, we'll take care of her. Okay. You know, I I like those guys. Yeah. They're very nice. They're great. And by the way, the I could see it coming, but the gag with trusty and old reliable, I can't, don't believe if I ever liked if I ever told you about this, I ah, have, buddy, like about the story his grandfather told yeah, yeah. him. The fact that Spoilers, we get to it, and he doesn't even remember her because he's never had anybody he hasn't told the story to. Right, right. was good. That was good. I, I, and I was, cute. I was very invested in finding out what Old Reliable had to say. Yes. What was the advice? You'll never know. No! And I, I like that. Well, I like that. It's pretty classic. I mean, that's a, it's an old fashioned It's a thing. classic trope. It's a good trope. I mean, one, one of my favorite recent times is when uh, Louis C.K. was at American Hustle. And there was like the fishing Tell story. The story. No, we never <laughs> hear the fishing story. I was thinking that. We actually never hear the fishing story. That was it, rem it reminded me of that. Yeah, fishing um, story, yeah. But yes, look, I, I agree. Would <sighs> would this movie be better just a if little. it was a buddy picture and not a romance? No, you don't have Maybe. to. You don't have to say that. They're romance. You hate the romance, no. though. Because they. You hate the spaghetti. You hate the tramp. You hate the romance. It's, Let's just say it. It's the weakest part of the movie. All right. Well, and, it, and you know it, it because it tramp is terrible. And that's kind of a problem for a romance. Okay. You know, people love... All right, but Beauty and the Beast has issues with the romance, too. You're people. not comparing Sometime, Beauty and the Beast to Lady Tramp. Of course not. Trans. That's a uh, you know. pinnacle. Um, <laughs> My point but is, people do have issues with that romance as well. Okay. Look, the, Disney romances, are they perfect? No. All right. But but they grow from... All right, all right. Here, okay, all right. You know what? This is the thing, though, Dan. This mm -hmm. is the thing. Yes. I was so enjoying that, that aspect of the movie... 
that it was very irritated so that there was a gaping flaw okay. of, a, of, okay. a, of a much per, more a much better romance. But like I said, it would have been boy, interesting to read the some of, no, 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 some of the critics uh, from the fifties. I'm sure problems. you can find them somewhere because it's like when you look on if you look on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, they'll have they'll what it. It, well, right? They'll have what people have said now when they're reviewing the new DVD of it or no. whatever. It's like I would I would be curious to go back to like some newspapers in the fifties and see what the critics didn't like about it then. I would be too, and, and I guess and that's my biggest issue is because people love of, it now. It's because of the potential. Like this is the thing, Dan. I'm only so mad about that because the the performances so and writing other good was, things about was so it. good. Okay, and I and I'm going to give them credit since this is. Like so early in the pantheon still, mm -hmm. and they obviously get better, which I'm reminding myself of. That these are like and then they get worse again. <laughs> they, <laughs> Spoilers. The, these are some of the most fleshed out characters of writing they've done yes. so far. Yes. That I'll give them a break for the romance being kind of broken. Okay. At parts, but but honestly, that was my biggest issue with the movie. Okay. Um, but but uh, as a side effect of the greatness it has in the performances, that's and, fair, and the writing. Okay. So the strongest thing about this movie, which is also with the mu some of the music with the with the spaghetti, but music is fine. But then there's also. But speaking of the music, racism. Let's go back to the Siamese. We haven't talked about them yet. We've talked oh. about them like ten times, but let's actually oh, talk about right. Sai and Am. Can I talk about it? We are Siamese, if you please. We are Siamese. We're Siamese, please, if you don't please. If you don't please, when you okay. and they they that makes a Classic. lot of sense. Classic. Classic. Classic, Nan. And you want to know something? Now, they didn't put that in the new live-action version. I don't know why. All right. <laughs> I forget why. All right. You want to know something bad? Uh, no, oh, okay, yes. Tell right, me right, something well, bad. But we got to rate okay, it okay, wait, on the, the wait, Disney wait, racism wait. scale. Well, I'm just, let, of, let me tell you. Okay. 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 We'll, we'll get there. Okay. But first of all, I want to say with the music, mm -hmm. let's talk about the music briefly. Sure. Okay. Overall, in the whole movie? Oh, overall, just okay. as an aside. Okay. Um, I... We, okay. I think the music's fine. You know, you know how like your comment the last movie or two we were really tired of this ball ballroom radio. Yes. Like, um, yes. I was, I, when the moment the, that the first one came the 40s on, I was, style. I, was like, I was thinking of that. Yeah. I'm so tired of this. Can mm -hmm. we get something? Else? But anyway, that's there. It's just the same as the last like five movies. Yeah. Yeah. They still haven't caught on yet to like. I mean, rock and roll is still being formed, but like I don't know the the song that um, what's his face sings in Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. Mm -hmm. Is uh, you know is is better compared to this? There you go. You know. Uh, well, our, my short version. I think the music in here is nice. There there aren't many pieces that wowed me, but since watching it, I've been humming things to myself. Is that right? What a beautiful night, little spaghetti. See, I don't wow. hate it. Wow. Uh, yes, I look. The Bella Note. He's a tramp. Is he's a scout. You know, the I, best song in the movie, and I think it it. Is maybe why the spaghetti scene is so amazing. The music is good because that music to me is the best in the whole movie. The music and that that sets um, the tone for the music. All this music is nice, catchy, yeah. warm. Nothing incredible. Yeah, I don't think there's any real home runs here. But there's some memorable. I think when people tunes. think of Lady and the Tramp, they think of the scene, or, but they don't necessarily think of any of the music. But like I said, it's it stuck with me though. I'm still I'm still okay. humming some of them more so than. Some of the other movies lately. Yes, more than more than. Uh, but here's the problem. Here's the kicker for me. Okay. Thinking back about this movie, every time I think about this movie, uh, even more so than Peter Pan and what makes the Red Man Red being the most catchy song in the movie and being the most racist. Very catchy. In I can Peter tell Pan. you, having no memory of as this not being my favorite uh, Disney film over the many years growing up. I would sometimes catch myself thinking of, course. of the scenes and saying, We hot, are Siamese. It's a hot song if, on the We Are you, Siamese. If you please, I'm like, damn, this catchy song. and Very catchy. Very classic. Very classic, catchy, very wow, possible. you love it. Poss uh, more offensive than Red Man Red because... Is it? Yes. Why? Why well, do you think? Because this is the 50s. This is after World War II. This is during Korea. Yeah, up that's until, true. Up until like maybe recent times, that and even to some extent today, this is the safest group to make fun of. They're cats. They're evil. So they're also people. Obviously, don't like cats in this dog right, movie. Right. So they're equated as the worst thing ever. They're troublemakers. They're evil. No redeeming characteristics. And that song ha has best no best song in the movie. No best song in the movie. <laughs> it is most catchy song. You know it is. And that part. They don't even come back into the plot. 
They're just there. They're they just the there. You're right. You're right. At least the Red like, Man song. Like if there was a scene where they got their comeuppance, okay. or even with Aunt Sarah. Like I know she gets slightly redeemed at the end by getting them dog biscuits, even though she's a terrible. She sucks. She's a terrible. Worse than Tramp. Ooh. I mean, it's real. We have somebody worse right. than Tramp. It's finally. realistic in the sense that somebody might not like dogs and and think they're yeah. Muggles, but like. Does, does Jim Deere have no other relatives he can call on? <laughs> Maybe he doesn't. I don't and Sarah, know. And Sarah, like, it's I, possible. I know, but she they was... They too far away. She was insufferable. Which she I, was I, bad. Which is the point. But she's that still, was the point She's the real villain in the movie. It's fine. But Tramp is supposed to be good. And you hate he's, him. He's kind of villainous in a way. He's problematic. Uh, anyway, but, but whatever. But the Siamese cats, they are... All right. I, listen, uh, I, will, I will say something. Great. I think this song could have been more racist. Yes. Yes, it could have been. You know what I mean? So I, I think... I, I, that's why I'm not sure if it's more racist than the Red Man song. Uh, the reason why I think it's but racist... But I do agree that the characters are irrelevant. Uh, uh, that's that's not a good thing. Entire, yeah. The, the reason I would say that the, the Siamese cats are a little more racist than the Native Americans and Peter Pan is, as I pointed out to you, they're, it's trying to pay the, the Native Americans a compliment. Remember? Yes. In a back it's end. a backhanded compliment. Uh, it's, You're right. The Siamese, they are bad. They are they bad. They are evil. We hate Korea. We hate the Japanese. Right. The, I believe this was malicious on some level. Well, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. I, I, I'm, I, this, that was the time. And I get, and I get that. And so they give him the most catchy song. Ironically. <laughs> so no, It so, is. It is. So, so, like, I get what you're saying. I agree. Yeah. Contextually, but... There's no getting around. This is pretty legendary Disney racism. Oh, very legendary. So, okay, where does it fall on the scale? You've got, I would say, the top three. I know the. I know from the, what we've seen so, oh, far, we've seen so far have got to be, Song of the South. Yeah. Uh, but also kind of. I would say probably Red Man Red. It's pretty racist. And and the Siamese. So you think is there like anything else? There's one we haven't like, seen. Oh, I'm Strabali's, talking about like the ones we've Strabali seen. Strabali was pretty pretty offensive. I guess. <laughs> For an Italian guy in the '40s. Yeah, he was pretty Bowley was pretty racist. He was evil. But I think compared to the other th He's the less he's the lesser, maybe. Red Man Red was oh, the crows. hard to watch. Yeah, but the crows I don't, I don't think they're racist. I don't think the crows are that we're racist. We're in the minority on that one. We're not yeah, we're in the so, minority, so, but but they're they're kind of racist, um, I guess. I'm trying to think, is there anybody else? Not really. I but mean Cinderella's white. Everyone's white. Cinderella was very white, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's racist. No, it's not. Um uh, was, no. there, was there any racism in Alice in Wonderland? Because that was a trippy movie, man. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't think so. I think those are the top three or four. <laughs> I think I know. If you throw Stromboli in there, yeah. Um, Aristocats is the most racist, but we're not there yet. We haven't seen that yet. No, I've never seen it. Um, I just know about it. I'm not sure if I've ever seen it either. I'm just messing with it. I've seen it many times. Oh, uh, yeah. you. I, I actually don't think I have. But, but yeah, the when we get to Aristocats, it eventually, okay. I, that has a scene that, that puts um, this to shame, actually. I agree with you though that the Siamese cats never return. Which is uh, which uh, is a that, little which bit is weird. They, they come in the movie. Their entire they purpose leave. to be in the movie was to be racist. And that that made me angrier than anything. Like they don't even they're just they're just a set piece, literally a set piece. Yeah. And I and I just it bugged, it bugged me. All right, a that's little, fair. But but I don't. I think most racist is Song of the South. Yeah. Because that's the only one that was actually being criticized as being racist at the when time, it came out. But they knew it was pretty bad. Um, so, I, I, I gotta give it to that. Well, yeah, I mean, for but, sure. Um, but over this and the... Great song, though. We Are Siamese, great song. It's a fun song. It's offensive. Yeah. But it's the catchiest song in the movie. It's the one I remembered after all yeah. these years. It's, it's, it's the catchiest one in the movie. What a dog. So much so that I don't even associate it with this movie. I never even quite knew where it was from. I just knew it was some racist <laughs> it's Disney It's Transcended Lady But it's Transcended Lady and the Tramp. That's sad. Spaghetti scene, I know is Lady and the Tramp. We are Siamese if you Something more, more... I just knew it was an old Disney movie. I just didn't know... I oh, didn't it's, know it's from one. a Disney movie. Yeah, but, a pretty um, big one, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, what else can we talk about? That's uh, it. Honestly, that was it for me. Uh, I All right. I think it's... Um, oh, I... I um. I liked some of the side characters. Uh, I liked... Yeah, uh, I mean, look, J Jock and uh, Tr Trusty, Trusty are they were my great. favorites. They are my favorites, too. You know, I uh, like Lady. She's I like Lady. I like some of the uh, other other uh, people. In the oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. This one kind of does deal with some kind of darker, more adult themes, like dealing with uh, classism, 
crime at the pound prison. Yeah, I mean, execution. I, we've seen, I think, some of the, the class stuff with some of the previous films, for sure. But I think this is a little but more But this maybe subtle. goes a little further with um, the Things that would go for a kid's of, head. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Like, I didn't get the a lot of the prison stuff or the... The you know the the married life versus the single life like things yeah that, that's true that adults would uh, pick up on that's oh, a good one and the beaver is basically the beaver from Winnie the Pooh they must have taken it oh yes Shines. it's the same character yes, absolutely same character I think same voice same voice um, I was like oh my goodness that's that's the, yes. so he came first I forgot the beaver scene yeah we got the beaver scene that yeah. was good they got the muzzle off I did like the beaver beaver's great yeah same beaver's character funny. same man. Uh, definitely same man. <laughs> definitely same man. There's no doubt about that. Same uh, All right, well, listen. This is already one of our longer entries. Let's talk about the DVD quick. Oh, shoot, yeah, yeah. We still got to do that. Um, so this is uh, the old Diamond Edition uh, of Lady and the Tramp. Like I said, I think there is one one more. But, um, all right, let's 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 see. So um, what what they're doing now with these, which I love, because some of these I've only had so far on, on uh, DVD. Uh -huh. Some of these that I have on Blu-ray, though, it, it's great that they have all of the previous versions extras. They poured it over to the new version, and then they have extra, you know, features on top of that. So, um, all right. So first of all, the uh, first release for this was 1987. VHS and Laserdisc Classic. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it was part of the Walt Disney Classics series. Oh, wow. Uh, in the UK, it came out in 1990. Between those those two entries, three million sold, becoming the best-selling VHS to that point in time. What? Yeah. Now, like we've talked about, some of the Disney wow. Classics didn't come out till the 90s. Snow White didn't come out till the this 90s. This is early. So this is pretty early, 87, but not the earliest. I mean, we've definitely had some that were released before this. Yeah. But for some reason, this was the top seller, 3 million. People like Lady and the Tramp. They yeah. put it back into the vault, of course, after that. So then VHS again in 98 uh, as part of the Masterpiece Collection. Uh, limited edition DVD in 1999 for 60 days only. That is a quick... Usually if it's out, they'll put it up for at least six months, but that was quick. Jeez. Then uh, DVD in 06 is the Platinum Collection. Another million copies sold. I mean, this thing is a juggernaut in terms of the love that people have for this movie. People love it. I, I'm not sure I'm with them, but <laughs> all right. <laughs> so it's um, you know, and then on Blu-ray, like I have, and then it was released once more in uh, 2018 as part of the Disney Signature Collection. So uh, it's got the uh, the intro with Diane Disney Miller. She's on a lot of these now. Uh, an eight-minute feature with Diane talking about growing up with Walt, oh. random memories, um, what kind of dad he was, what kind of grandfather he was. So that was kind of interesting. Didn't have specifically to do with Lady and the Tramp. That's but cool, though. I guess because Lady and the Tramp has sort of a family theme. More about the man. I could see it. The family behind it. It could be, you know. Yeah. Um, well, and I guess it's, it's a little personal because he with had the dog, the, the dog uh, gift the, to, to her mom. Which is, an, which is actually one of, I think, I, nice. I think that's the cutest scene in the movie. Very movie. cute. Very cute. Um, 20 minutes of deleted scenes and storyboards. Okay. That's always good. Uh, narration explaining what the scenes you know would have been and where in the film they would be. There is a a tramp song from 1946 that they took out during rewrites when they decided Tramp would not be a speaking character, but originally he sang a song and oh. maybe had a few lines as well. Um, full length commentary with uh, some some animators going inside Walt's story meetings. Hmm. So basically, it was all there was like some. Uh, excerpted audio from his meetings, um, recreations of audio from his meetings. Recorded everything. Uh, a lot of that kind of stuff. And then there's this thing called second screen options. Doesn't exist anymore. So I couldn't really delve into that. But what it was was an app on your iPad or uh, on your computer, I guess, a website you could go to called DisneySecondScreen.com or something. And it would basically, you watch the movie while you had this app on or while you had the site on. And it was, it seems like it was basically like a pop-up video sort of thing. But you would have to look at both screens at the same time. I don't know. Uh, I, I wish it was still in existence so I could delve into it a little more. But uh, about five years ago, they canceled that. So, And then all of the earlier DVD features are here. The 52-minute making of the movie. Nice. Uh, three trailers from some of the re-releases and the original. Uh, the two excerpts from the Disneyland series that were about this. The story of dogs 
and then the Cavalcade of Songs, which incorporated some of these songs as well um, before the release. A, uh, a nine minute, this is for the kids here, a nine minute Puppypedia featurette, like a Wikipedia, but for the kids to learn about the different breeds of puppies. Oh. That didn't interest me, but okay. Fred Willard was the host, God rest his soul. Um, mm -hmm. 12 minute storyboard version of the film from 1943. That's cool. So one of the very early drafts of it. Before That would have been before the uh, guy even wrote his story. So that's all based on the original guy. Hmm. Um, and the 13 minute feature read about uh, what is a storyboard, why it was so important to animation. Oh yeah, that's um, cool. That's kind of cool. And then um, Eric Goldberg, who was the animator on dozens of Disney films including Aladdin. Oh. And uh, as 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 recent as Wreck It Ralph, wow. or maybe Wreck It Ralph Two, I forget. But Jeez. he's obviously still with the company. Um, so he still. provided uh, a lot of the introduction to these featurettes on here. He did the whole storyboard bit. He took us inside the Disney Vault. So a lot of the classic like vault stuff that I really like about the storyboards. So I kind of like this because. There's something for a little bit of everybody. Yeah. Like it had like a little puppy pedia feature for the kids, but then for the the Disney historian in me, I enjoyed a lot of the the deleted stuff and all, all that place. stuff. That's all really cool. Place. So very cool. I think the second screen was more for the kids, but again, I I, I couldn't look at it. So that's okay. Um, but that's what that's what we got. So uh, let's grade the movie. Let's grade the video. I, I would say this package is probably an A. I don't think it's quite among the, the top good. tier, but it's got a lot of really interesting stuff to, to look through. And I love all the old Disneyland show stuff from the 50s. Mm -hmm. Tim and I have been talking about a lot of that, um, you know, especially last week with Davy Crockett being a collection of Disneyland episodes. Um, but I, I just think it's cool that Walt had all this foresight to save literally... A scrap of paper, like I, everything I like, um, that, has been archived. Much of an archivist he is. It's uh, yeah, that's really cool, actually. I'm, yeah, I'm glad he did that. I'm glad he did it too. And a lot of these things were lost for literally decades, 40, 50 plus years. But now, since Blu-rays became popular and DVDs became popular with all the bonuses, you have a whole team now of people that work at Disney combing through archives for yeah. stills of Pinocchio and scenes of Bambi that were cut and that were just unlabeled, and, and so now, you know, they're going through all that. Disney archivist would be great. You know, I, I really, what a job. This is random, but I, I do wish that the Doctor Who producers had the foresight of Disney to think, oh, maybe we can I keep know. these around. I all know. that second Doctor stuff is gone. I'm just like, man. I know there's so much that's gone, and yeah, thank TV God stuff. Disney had... TV keeps... Uh, well, and, you know, speaking of TV, I mean, there were that the fourth network back in the 50s, Dumont. You had ABC, NBC, CBS, Dumont, wow. and... Uh, it's it's there's some shows that still survive one episode or so in like the UCLA television archive, but in the seventies, the the company that bought out Dumont, I don't know who it was, literally dumped thousands of shows How they do this? into the the river. <laughs> Because, uh, be, I don't know. But the 70s is when syndication started, right? I know. That's stupid. Dude, okay. don't get me oh, started. That's, that's a different chance. topic, but it just kills me. So uh, it's so great that Disney, as far Keeps back the as the 30s, has has so many, like, just... And they look good, too. Like, Big they've volume. been preserved well. So I, I got to give them props for that. So I, I give this package an A, but let's talk about the movie. Yeah. Um, for me, this is a B. Oh, wow. I, I think it is not... I don't understand why everyone is, is just in love with it. I think it's fine. But I can see why critics, when it originally came out, might have had some issues with it. Because I think you're right. There's you know The film seems at times to be sort of at odds with itself well, I, of what it's trying to do and say. Maybe B is a um, okay grade for it. Because you think that's too I, low? No. What I, were you thinking? I was thinking B+. Plus. Mostly because I mean I think like we said the animation songs are fine so, like songs are decent animation is still pretty good songs are with the decent dogs, but we but the animation we've seen the their modeling and stuff before with the movements yes I don't so, think other than I think I thought the rat sequence was really inspired the shadows is cool um, the, but yeah. other than that like I thought the animation was everything in it this was, movie it was, was pretty, fine it was all good the but the thing that that like I said elevated it was. Was the the voice acting right and the writing of the characters and like that to bring them to life and make them more three dimensional? 
This yeah. was the best. I movie. thought that was good. But like I said, the glaring character gap with the tramp and his story right. being kind of incomplete kind of prevents him from getting being fully above in that yeah. area. So it's it's frustrating. For me. I think this is this is better than some of the recent ones we've seen. Certainly better than Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Um, I would say overall it's probably better than Peter Pan. Probably better than Peter Pan. I I guess um, I could agree with the B. I want to say B plus, but I'm so mad about the tramp and the love story that it, it's it kind of sabotages stuff. I like the love story more than you, clearly, but but it's, it has big uh, problems though. It's got some problems. It's got some problems. It's got some problems, and you know the Siamese cats are a little bit problematic. The, the racism of that is also uh, as not well. Good. Um, I mean, look, I, I, I'm either way on it. B plus B. I, I, I think a B is fine for this movie. I think everything about this movie with with a few asterisks is fine. Pretty good. 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 It, but nothing about this movie, I think, is great. Like, when I think of this, even after you watching know? it, there are things about it I appreciate more. Like yeah. The voice acting, like I said, and the character writing is the best for the most part. But I still don't think of this as cream of the crop. No. At all. And, and look, I think we've admitted on some of our other videos that some of those early works, if they were the tenth movie in, maybe wouldn't have gotten A's or A pluses. We think about the you historical know, context. Snow White and the, the Seven Dwarfs, look, it's an A plus movie. It's you know, but largely that's just like if we judge it if we judge it by now, of course, care writing right. issues and yeah. But this is the fifteenth animated movie now. And I, I don't think there's anything nearly as groundbreaking as a lot of the other things we've seen. Like I said, voice, so, voice acting I think and, B and, is fine. and character writing. Character, you're right. I yeah, guess, I guess the, the one the best thing, thing that's groundbreaking in that is the character writing. And I think that comes probably from the fact that it's an original idea. That's that's the one thing this movie has done be better than all the other ones. I so agree far, with which, that. Which I have to And that could push it up to a plus. That's I, that's why I was like B plus. I really liked that so much. Yeah. That's what I that's why I, right. I, I'd be okay with the B plus for that. It's still not going to be I still don't think it's like an A or anything. All right. I guess B plus. I think I think you like, just I think you dislike the movie more than me. So the fact that I'm a B and you're a B like, plus because I guess I'll say B plus. Because I have big issues from the tramp judging it by yeah. a, like a, a newer movie or right but but I'm, I'm giving it the benefit of a doubt which is I'm angry but that's not really affecting my grade because 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 the vocal performances and character writing was so good all right well I do agree on on those two counts for sure so that's that's so, why I, I'd be okay with the B plus. okay well well for me it's more B I'll, I'll put it to you like see that. my snow <laughs> stop it I'll put it to you like that a lot of these movies when I watch the features and I see all the hard work that gets put into it, I'm I telling do, you, man. I think to myself, oh, maybe maybe this deserves this. All right. This one, though, I didn't feel that way with. Really? Even after watching all the background, I was like, okay, it's still fine. Everything's fine. I guess that's sort of... I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm not with you. B. I'm back down to a B. <laughs> all right, no. We agree on grades in this show. I, I Dan would, does Disney. No, B plus is fine. Okay. Okay. B plus is fine I'd because be okay of the characterization. The I'd be okay with the B too. I would be. Well, now, now we're just going in circles. Um, but B let's, plus, let's say B, B, B and a half. B point five. <laughs> B point five. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's that's. I I think. No, actually, you know what? I'm calling it Dan. B because okay. because good stuff but balanced out by the tramp. I agree. I, the tramp, we agreed That's, on He I, brings it down. Yeah. The tramp I, brings I, this I was movie a B, down. I was a B from the go. B. All right. B. Okay. B it is. B. B it let is. it be. All right. Let it be. Great song. <laughs> Better than the Siamese song? Definitely. Yes. All right. Uh, that does it. We, I don't know if we've done a Dan Does Disney that's this long. Have maybe. We? Maybe. Since, since. 108. Maybe. Some of these are talkers. I told you. Oh, this no, wait. I'll tell you. The one was like an hour and a half. I forget which one. Was it uh, Cinderella? Peter Pan was long. Peter Pan was... Ve it might have been Peter, Peter Pan. Peter Pan was way too It was long. one of the recent ones. Anyway, that's <laughs> you can just look at, and see that. We don't need to discuss it now. All right. Uh, thank you so much. The next one with you is, again, not for another, like, 15 movies. Oh, great. Uh, a lot of documentaries coming up. A lot, he, Walt is really getting into the live action here. Um, the next one with you is one of your favorites. Is it? Sleeping Beauty, I believe. Oh, I've been waiting for this one. It's, you've been waiting for it since the word go. Um, <laughs> yes, actually. You know, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, we will get to that next. It's the first one going into it that I could say that I genuinely loved yes. beforehand. But I would say for Dan Does Disney, it's probably early 2021. Because I think Tim and oh, I have gonna a, be months. I think Tim and I have a good 10 or 12 at least before, yeah, uh, I won't, before we get I to I won't that. be on one of these until January yeah. or February, probably. But luckily we have 25 other... 
OC shows to do, which you put and gigs and all of this. So, so all right. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you, Joe, as always. Welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye.